This is the BMW iX1 and is this electric version of the X1 the one you really should be considering? The iX1 has a surprising amount of engagement to offer you as a driver given that it's an electric SUV. To start with, the seating position is quite natural, not too high or too low for an SUV. But much of this is down to the fact that it puts out 313 PS and 494 Nm via an AWD setup through a motor on each axle. In our tests, we saw 0 to 100 kmph strength of 5.3 seconds and some blistering rolling acceleration times, enough to keep up with some serious performance cars. So on the move, power builds, of course, with that immediacy that you expect from an EV, but it's also measured, so it'll build in a linear, clean swell that's very easy to get used to. So in any situation, you know exactly what the drivetrain is doing, and that really helps you get used to, say, EV driving very easily. And another great trait is that this performance keeps going well past triple-digit speeds. So even if you are at, on the highway, even in the lowest modes, there's really no problem in the way the iX1 delivers performance and of course, given the output, there is a lot of it. Switch it to the efficiency mode. There too, it's very usable. It, you can pretty much use it daily in that mode, even at higher speeds. And conversely, switch it into sport and this thing really does wake up. The responses from the throttle, they're already quite precise. They sharpen up quite a bit. Diesel X1, which is this boost mode. And here it really does feel even more effective considering it's just giving you the full outputs very instantly, so in that sense, it's really quite exciting. The iX1 is powered by a 66.4 kWh lithium-ion battery pack. The WLTP range is up to 440 km, and in our real-world testing, we found that it gets quite close to this figure, managing 431 km. One of the factors helping this is that the iX1 seems to have quite an efficient regen program, being able to recuperate a good deal of energy even the lowest modes. The drive modes are also well calibrated and the iX1's efficiency doesn't plummet at highway speeds. The motor's efficiency and the good 0.26 drag coefficient may be factors helping this. Charging speeds are also reasonable if not class leading. The BMW will DC fast charge at up to 135 kilowatts, which needs 29 minutes to get from 10 to 80%. The 11 kilowatt AC charger takes 6.3 hours to fully top up the battery. So yeah, while it is quite potent, you do miss the sound that would have sort of made it a bit more engaging. But what really strikes you with the iX1 isn't the performance, to be honest. It's, again, the really quite fine balance between ride and handling that BMW has been able to manage. So first off is the ride. Even though this is an EV, it doesn't feel any less plush than the regular X1, so it's very well damped. So even at lower speeds over rough roads, it has that fluid, that sort of slightly soft edge to it that really helps. And this hasn't come at the cost of handling. As you can see, we're on some pretty good driving roads in here too. You have that all-wheel drive grip first off, which the regular X1 doesn't have, and that really shows in the kind of speeds that you can carry here and the kind of performance that you can extract from this car. And of course, you have that usual EV trait of all the weight being low down. So that also means that body movements are really quite well controlled. So you have a sense of confidence driving around corners and really getting the most out of this powertrain. So and also aiding this is the steering. So in various modes, it'll so depending on the modes, it'll either lighten up or become a touch more heftier and direct. But of course, you can't forget the fact that this is an EV and it is quite heavy. So if you are a bit too enthusiastic, you will notice that it starts to feel that it'll run wide, but it does have a torque vectoring by braking system that really does work quite effectively to reel you back in. You'll be hard-pressed to tell the BMW iX1 apart from the regular X1 from afar. Look closer and the giveaways are the blanked out grille, which in this M Sport version still mimics that of an IC BMW, and the blue outline for the BMW badges. So like with the X1, this EV2 carries a good deal of presence with its upright stance and the expressive face. But you do notice a 13mm reduction in ground clearance and the way the SUV feels a touch more hunkered down. At the rear 3D detailing to the lights is still quite eye-catching and like the front, 
the contrasting black surfaces seem to cut down the iX1's mass to good effect. This electric SUV manages to exude a degree of sportiness helped by the quite traditional M Sport alloys. Yes, the reduced ground clearance means you will have to be careful over the larger speed breakers and the spare wheel is now just packed into the boot, eating into space. Now, the only way you'll be able to tell that this is the electric iX from within here is through this blue outlining to the BMW badge here. And if you look very closely, the B brake board version here of the gear selector. But aside from that, that's not really a bad thing because what you get is an interior that is right up there with the best at this price point. So yeah, you have this very open and contemporary feeling space here, which there is some giveaway to practicality. For example, these spaces that don't hold things tightly in place, which can be a bit of an issue, but you do get this very neat wireless charging arrangement. But what really steps this cabin to the next level is the sheer quality of materials and finishes. So of course, all of this is soft materials, even right down here, the it's not soft, but it's done to a very good standard, the plastics. But the metals, for example, this bit feels cold to the touch. This has this textured finish, the hair from the vents, and these, there aren't too many buttons as usual, but what is there is well done here. Similarly, for the steering wheel, it's one of the nicer wheels to hold. You still get hard buttons, so it's very easy to control the screen through here and set the cruise control. So in that sense, you do feel you've spent money well here. The tech setup is also shared with the ICX1. Yes, the 10.25 inch driver's display sees some change with EV specific information, and this is presented quite neatly. Again, the idea seems to be to ease you into electric mobility naturally. The screen is easy to navigate and customizable to a good extent. The 10.7 inch touchscreen continues with its touch heavy interface. Most of the bugs from earlier seem to have been fixed, so while it does take a while to get used to some functions, like the climate control and drive modes, it's a more fluid experience than earlier. The BMW iX1 gets the same features as the regular X1, so some of the highlights include massaging front seats, a panoramic sunroof, 12 speaker Harman Kardon audio, leather upholstery, ambient lighting and connected features. There's a good deal of safety equipment to view your emergency braking and lane departure warning, as well as a brake-based differential locking function and hill descent control. You also have an active park feature, but we would have also liked blind spot monitoring and 360-degree cameras. Now, the differences are slightly more apparent here because you notice that with the slightly raised floor to accommodate the battery pack, you sit in a bit of a knees up position and but that's mainly noticed with a lack of lumbar support it's not as good as in the IC version but in terms of space and the feeling from behind here aside from this difference it's again very similar so you have good place to put your feet in here as you can see a good amount of knee room for me headroom is also pretty decent and yeah the seats themselves they are pretty comfortable the backrest especially since you can also recline it and yeah like the front you have Quite an airy feeling with the large glass area that's there. And again, this water glass, which is quite large, really does work and add to that sense of space in this cabin. And like at the front, there are a decent degree of storage spaces, although again, but again, this space could have been more secure to if you could just put your phone in here, but the pockets are large. And of course, you also have a center armrest. Priced at Rs 70.70 lakh on road Mumbai, you pay about Rs 7 lakh more from the BMW iX1 over the diesel X1. We think this makes it a great pick if you're looking for the added performance and handling chops, the usual EV positive aside. You don't have the immense range of the diesel X1, but the iX1 is arguably more engaging to drive without sacrificing on comfort. You also don't lose out on practicality or equipment, a win-win.